Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide online valuation services for mediation and litigation based in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we'll be discussing divorce, prenups, and parenting plans with Kalina Costa Plotke. She's a family law attorney in Atlanta, Georgia with KF Law, LLC. She concentrates primarily on family law, which would include divorce or child custody, child support, modification of maintenance, alimony, prenuptial agreements, and the list goes on. I think that one thing though, that when people are considered, and when they're at this place and they need to start considering what they're going to put in their parenting plan, I think they need, you know, a lot of times I will tell people to at least identify the areas that have traditionally had some conflict in it. You know, so if you guys have always argued about summer camp, right? One thinks you should go, one thinks you shouldn't, one thinks you should go out of state, one thinks you should go local, you know, um, I think those are good places to start. But are there other, you know, like, because you don't want to complicate it too much. But are there, is there like a checklist? Or do you do you get people thinking about the things that are important to them about the kids and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it definitely we ask what is um, important to each person. So I had my daughter at 20 outside of marriage. And so when we did the legitimation process and stuff like that, I'll never forget that um, at that time, usually fathers, the secondary parent got um, tiebreaker for extracurricular activities. And so when his attorney came in and said that, I said, no. I want tiebreaker in extracurricular. He can have religion. And her face, <laughs> she looked like she had seen a ghost. But neither of us were very religious. He is now because of his wife, and that's great. But I'm not very religious. But I knew he would block extracurricular activities because of the expense of extracurricular activities. And I also put that in there, too. Like, if she, uh, if they have tiebreaker and you think they're, they're going to pick the most expensive extracurricular like space camp at NASA, then we can put a cap on it. Like if there's a yearly allowance of $1,000 for extracurricular and then they can still enroll them. It's just at their cost. Yeah. And that's how I think you can treat a few like private school, college, you know, for some people thinking about all of that when you have a little kid is a lot. But there's, I think all attorneys in every state have kind of just regular things, regular, it's not even tricks, it's more just like suggestions of how to deal with, you know, like in the state of Missouri, sometimes they'll say, okay, you can go to, a, you'll split the cost for a college at a certain level. But beyond that, you kind of have to get buy in, you know, um, from both parents to pay for something like that. Um, and I think that those are the difficult, the more difficult or where the child will go to school for grade school. Um, and then who's going to pay for it? You know, so a lot of that, do you see that there are times um, where there could be uneven payments of things? Or do you always see like 50 50 payment for things? Um, I mean, so I don't see 50-50 payment of things when there's an income disparity. So, you know, if father is making a million a year, mother's making 35, then he's paying like 90% of those out-of-pocket expenses. Um, and it's based on like the child support worksheet, a percentage gets popped out, and that's what we use. Um, but yeah, I mean, we try to limit all the things that they can tie you in into extra cost in addition to child support. So private school is a great example as well. If you, uh, in most of my parenting plans, if you both don't agree on a private school, then, and the, the tiebreaker decides to put them in private school anyway, then they don't have to pay any of the cost. The other parent mm -hmm. doesn't have to pay any of the cost. Um, and here in the state of Georgia, unfortunately, parents um, can kick their kids out at 18 after they graduated high school, give them a pat on the head and say, see you later. So no court in the state of Georgia is going to require a parent to pay college costs. It's just not going to happen. So in a lot of my cases, I'll have parents that say, yeah, if I have the money, then I'm going to pay for it. But I don't want to put it in an agreement or an order where I'm going to be held in contempt if I don't have the money and I can't pay it. 
Yeah. And I think that that's sometimes the biggest concern that people will kick some of those decisions to the time, um, hoping that maybe they're going to get along better at that point. But again, I also have clients that are like, well, I'm only going to pay if they go to this school, the school that I went to. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that at least having the discussion and kind of uncovering the issue, it like, is there an issue, you know, cause sometimes you'll be like, okay, we well, can work that out. Okay. We can work that out. But then you'll hit a couple that are like, oh, we can't even agree when we're talking about it. And in my mind, those, it's just a good exercise to at least walk down the path of what, what would you do? What would I do kind of um, situation? But again, they can always mediate it, you know, but I think that part of it is they're trying to figure out how to co-parent going forward.